and welcome to Toffee Blue Cast. can see the numbers are coming on. Um, get involved in the comments. We do massively interact with the Everton fans and other fans. If you come on, we respect you. Uh, we might get a few Chelsea fans on. You never know with us uh, doing a bit of a different thing tonight. I've got with me tonight to uh, Rob, not Paul. Uh, Rob's joined the challenge on this one. We're both going to do it and it should be fun. And it'll be fun for you lot in the comments because we want to see what you put as well. First of all, this will pop up on the Toffee Bluecast Twitter. The link is there for you. So you can click the link and it takes you straight over to YouTube. No catch, don't cost nothing. It just means we can see your comments over on YouTube. So if you want to come over, come over. But also Twitter now do where you can put your comments from Twitter to YouTube. So you don't even have to come over if you're not comfortable doing that. But uh, yeah, so if you can come over, get involved. This will be a good show tonight. First time we've done it, so it's going to be interesting. Combined... Starting 11, that's what we're going for tonight, Rob. So, um, Chelsea squad, you can use the whole squad. Everton squad, you can use the whole squad. And we want your starting 11 from combining both squads together. We're going to want it in the comments. Rob's going to give his, I'm going to give mine, and we're going to put it on the screen what it looks like. Um, even Emma, get involved in the comments, love it. Want to hear yours as well. So we're going to give ours, and then when we finish with ours, we want yours, and we'll put yours on the screen. 10, 15-minute show, but a good bit of fun for the build-up to the game. So you've been thinking about yours. I heard you, you told me you've got a bit of pen and paper on this. Yeah, and obviously you gave me some rules that I had to pick um, six and five. Otherwise, for me, it would have been one or two Everton players and nine Chelsea players. But um, yeah, difficult, very difficult. I, I may be had three Everton players who I was happy to put straight in and then others I was like oh god so um, this team could be mental to look at but I got there in the end anyway so we'll see how it comes across I'm going to do mine on the spot now I'm not doing it for any reason on the spot I just do it on the spot because I'm not organised enough to write it down like you've done so I'm going to do mine on the spot so it's going to be interesting you'll see all me had go through the motions of this. Do, do you know why um, I had to get a pen and paper as well? Is because Chelsea have like 150 players. And unless you write them all down, you're bound to forget somebody, you know, somebody really obvious. Like I'd wrote my team down and then I went and looked at the squad that played last Saturday or Sunday and I was like, oh, I forgot about him. I have to get him in there. They've just got so many players, Chelsea. It's <laughs> very, very difficult. It was it was really weird because like I, d I tried to write down the whole squad of Chelsea and the whole squad of Everton, but I had to get rid of a lot of Chelsea players. It seems like they've got more than us when you look at the whole squad. I mean, these are the players that we're talking about now. Uh, I, they've got three goalkeepers. I've only written one because you're only allowed to write so many words on the screen here. But yeah, they have got a massive squad. Like you've I'm just said, I've left a few out. Emma's comment there, Dan. That Emma, that's exactly what I said to Dan earlier today. <laughs> That's exactly what I said to him when he told me this is what we were doing. And then, like, uh, I yeah. thought I can't. He, he... Then, like, I thought I can't do that. <laughs> he said, he, literally, we put it in the group and organised Rob to come on, and he goes, right, Brantwaite and uh, 10 Chelsea players. <laughs> it's going to be interesting, though, because I don't think it is. Because I, I don't think Chelsea are that good in some areas, probably more than one. Like, striker-wise, I know they're probably not happy with the strikers. It's going to be really interesting what we do with this combination. Yeah. Uh, Lulu yeah. there as well. 
So when we've done ours, we do want to want to hear yours, Emma, Lulu, and uh, everyone that gets involved in the comments. We want to see what you're going to go for as well. We might even chuck one on the screen. Right, so let's do this then. Let's lock this in. Let's make it interesting. Right, well, I'm should we tell everybody the rules? The... We'll tell them the rules, first yeah, of all. That it has to be... Um, so what's the split, down? It has to be six from one team, five from the other. So unfortunately, Emma, we cannot do 10 Chelsea players. Um, so it's it's six five, is it? That that's what we're going with. Six five. Like right. now, I don't know who to, whether to give you six Everton or give you six Chelsea. I think I think six I think of what either. We're going to do it. because because we're because we're Everton fans. I don't make to six on Everton. Everton. I've done Just six. To make Chelsea. Every... I tell you what, I've done. <laughs> I've done... Make... I know. I know you have. I know. <laughs> why don't I? Why don't I do six oh. Chelsea and you do six Everton? And then our teams are bound to be done. different. Don't you worry about that, mate. <laughs> Don't you worry about that. I know you've gone for six, Chelsea. Of course you would. I would have gone with ten. I would have gone with ten. Right, so it's just it's just come up on the screen now, once it the lineup. Yes, okay. And that's all clear, isn't it? You can see a good format on that. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Good stuff. Right, so let's 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 do this then, Rob. Let's go for yours. Um make it nice and professional. Okay. We want a team. Let's give you that. Rob, the manager. Bit of funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of yours on the screen as well, if there's a really good one that we like, and it's a bit yeah. different. Want your reasons as well. So in goals, we're gonna go we're gonna go six Everton, five Chelsea, Rob. Can I change the formation? Yeah, of course you can. Slightly do that for you. I want to play four 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 one one. I want one up top. Because both both teams are not blessed with um with goal scorers. Four, so four, one, we, one. Yeah, we'll go one strike. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay. It's kind of like an Everton formation that is anyway, isn't it? Similar. Okay. Okay, so you're making me do six Everton. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to. Like okay. I just wanna okay. make it a bit more complicated for okay. you. So we're gonna do yeah, six yeah. Everton. I'm gonna make a late substitution then. And okay. Right then. <laughs> this is so, good. This is in goal, the easiest decision out of all of them. Jordan Pickford, England's number one. Um, that, you know, Chelsea are not blessed with goalkeepers. I think their main one is Robert Sanchez, who's on loan from Brighton. I think he's a decent keeper, um, and I think he was good at Brighton. I don't think he's been great at Chelsea. Chelsea's other couple of keepers, Marcus Bentanelli is one of them, and I can't—I don't even know the guy's name who started last week, but. Um, I assume, something like that. I assume he only played because Sanchez is injured. I assume because Sanchez has been the number one all season, but he hasn't got a patch on Pickford. So, yeah, Pickford, easy peasy. Um, yeah, happy enough with that. So, you got Pickford there, yeah? Yeah. Um, what am I going, right or left back? You choose, mate. You choose. I've got, okay. the, I've got the hands here. I'll be... Uh... The, the right back... Possibly my favourite Chelsea player, um, Reese James. Love him, absolutely love him. I know he's never fit, but when he is fit, he's absolutely fantastic. Um, argument to say he could be in the England starting eleven. Um, I just love him. He's a goal scorer as well. He's great fantasy football player. He gets goals and assists. He can defend. He's quick. Um, and with all the issues Everton have it right back at the moment. I was not going to pick an Everton right back. So, yeah, Reese James goes straight in. Um, left back. Would you say Nicholas. he's better than Would you say he's better than Ashley Young? Yeah, I, I, I'd say it's tough. A very close call, Dan, but uh, <laughs> I think he might be a little bit better than Ashley Young. <laughs> nah, he is. Uh, this makes it straight away more of an attacking right back going James, doesn't yeah. it? I mean, we haven't got the attacking right back like exactly. that, have we? So, um, to your left. Left back, uh, Mikalenko. I was a bit Ooh, torn. On this gets one. In. I was a bit torn on this one, but again, I was trying to find Everton players I could put in the team. And the way I looked at it was Mikalenko potentially has been our player this season. So how could I not put him in? If you know what I mean. Um, and actually, in a weird way, maybe it's a good balance because Reese James is going to go up and down and up and down and up and down. And we know Mikalenko really doesn't like to do that. So. Um, yeah, maybe they kind of counteract each other a little bit. But yeah, I had to put him in. I was looking at the Chelsea left-backs. Um, Corcorella, who I think is a decent player, but I don't think he's ever 
really kicked on since he moved to Chelsea. Ben Chilwell I like, but he's never fit. I know I just said that about Reese James, but um, you know, Michelenko's a solid player, so yeah, no issues with him going in there. Is Gusto, do you know the Gusto, the really good one? Is he a right back then? He seems to be one of those. He plays right and left, and then sometimes he plays on the right or left of a back three as well. So I couldn't find whether he was a left back or a right back naturally. They seem to just put him whatever. Uh, but he's a good player. Again, right, I, mean, I think, yeah. I think the problem when you're doing something like this is you need to put five or six Everton players in. So you've got to look at the lads you trust. Mikelenko is one of our better players. So you'd be happy enough to put him in there, I think. This is where it gets interesting. Is it going to be the whole back four of Everton? <laughs> oh, here we go. Well, see, this is the problem is that <laughs> Everton's defence up until maybe the last month has been the best part of the team. So, obviously, Brantwaite goes in as one of the centre-halves. Um, do I need to say why? I mean, he could be playing in that Chelsea team, to be fair. He's that good. Um, yeah, it, himself and Pickford. Go left kind or of right? There. You're putting him on the left yeah, or the put, right? Put him left. He's a left-footed centre-half, isn't he? So, we'll put him on the yeah. left. Playing where, he, where himself he wants to play. and, um, interesting. The other one's going to be, I suppose. Himself and Pickford were the easy choices. It was like, right, Grant. Um this is where my late substitution has been made because when I picked this team, I had six Chelsea players and I had five Everton players. And then you told me I had to swap. I've done you. I've done you, mate. So initially, Thiago Silva was going to go in here beside Brantway. Oh, that would be a good combo, wouldn't it? And if it? Yeah, exactly. Experience and youth. Um, if it wasn't going to be Thiago Silva, it was going to be Levi Colwell, who I really like and I think is going to be I can actually see himself and Brantway playing for England together in the next five years. I think they could be the oh, two centre halves. Um, but you made me change it. So Tarkowski's going in here because, again, one of our more reliable players. Um, and truthfully, this is where it stops becoming dominated by Everton players. Now it gets a lot more Chelsea focus from here on out. But, like, if you look at it, I've got. <laughs> That, that's four Everton players picked already. We're not going to see Good a lot of Everton size, players. We're not going to see a lot of Everton players in the attacking positions. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm happy with that. Look, Thiago Silva was going to go in, but, you know, Tarkowski, solid player. Happy enough with that. Moving on. Um, Right-hand side of midfield, just ahead of Reese James, is Cole Palmer for me. I think he's been brilliant. Um, maybe Palmer Chelsea's right best wing, player. yeah, yeah. Maybe Chelsea's best player this season. I do wonder sometimes whether Man City regret letting him go. Chelsea have wasted a lot of money on a lot of players, but this fella looks to be the real deal. He's gone straight in there. Mad that they let him go into yeah. it, Rob. I find yeah. it bizarre. I do because, like, he's so he's so good. At, He's so Pep, good. It was a bad He's move. So Pep don't make many bad moves, but yeah. for me, it was a, it was a bad move from Pep. Could you imagine Foden and Palmer together? And, and some will argue really saying that they're really still good, it. they're still fine. But yeah. there's talks that Bernardo um, Silva might be leaving next season as well, ain't they? So I just find it bizarre that let Palmer. Yeah, go. and like forty million quid. Jeez, he'd go for double that now, would Bargain. he? Maybe more. He'd probably go to the Euros in the summer. Um, He's been really, really good. He's ice cold from the penalty spot. Have you seen any of his penalties? He yeah, just, really good he just doesn't maker. miss them. Low and hard, bottom left, uh, rootless. Just um, he, to be, I've got him on. I've got him on par with, and I know some people say it's crazy, but he's just in that circle for me with uh, Bellingham and Foden. He really is because the way he's performed this season, he's carried Chelsea. He really has carried yeah, Chelsea. So he's been he's been uh, the best player. He's absolutely circle. been the best player. Yeah. Um. So on to my left-hand side of midfield. Believe it or not, this is the one position I had the hardest trouble filling. Um, I knew I couldn't pick an Everton winger because our wingers have been really poor all season. I couldn't put McNeil in there. I couldn't put Harrison in. Dan June has barely played, and when he has, he hasn't been great. We've seen nothing of Dobbin. Really struggled here. So then I started looking at the Chelsea wingers. Mudridge. Don't rate Mudridge. Um... So I put Raheem Sterling in here, and Ooh, I did it more. I did it more based on the player he has been, 
what he's done mm. for Man City, the Premier Leagues he's won, how good he's been for England in the World Cups and the 2018. I think Me, it's the 2018 and Sterling together. And truthfully, Sterling's in the team because I couldn't find anybody else to put there. So that's why he gets the nod. It definitely wasn't going to be an Everton player. Um, moving into centre midfield, I've gone with Amadou Onana. Amadou Onana. Well, you put him like, on the left, on the right. He can go beside Sterling, I think. Um, yeah. And ahead of JB. Uh, again, Onana along with Brantwaite and Pickford. Pretty easy choices. I mean, I'm pretty sure anybody who has to do a combined Everton team will pick Pickford, Brantwaite and Onana. I think we all agree Chelsea on that. Want Onana. It's going to be interesting, isn't yeah. it? I mean, there has been, he's been, he has been linked to Chelsea and Man United, big links Man United and Barcelona as well. Yeah, look, he's, he's got a very, very bright future ahead of him. I think we all know that. Um, you know, some fans are not sold on him. He's a bit hit and miss at times, but he's got absolute quality. There's no doubt he's got quality. So, yeah. I actually am liking the look of this team. Now it's here in front of me. It's looking good. Look. It's yeah. looking good. Can we sign these players, please? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Fine. Here we Top go. Of your manager. Um, so then beside Onana, I've gone with Enzo Fernandez. What do you think Fernandez. of Fernandez? Because I've been massively disappointed with him. This he's night. one of those Better players. coming on now, but... He's one of those players. Obviously, he won the World Cup with Argentina, which... He came in for like 105 million or 110 million or something. Huge money. You can see he's got quality. I watched him in a couple of games. Um, I think there was a game early on the season against Liverpool, one of Potch's first games. They drew two all, I think. He was absolutely phenomenal. There was a game against Spurs, uh, that mad game on Monday Night Football where Spurs had like three players sent off and half the team injured. Chelsea beat them 4 0 or 4 1. Spurs just decided not to defend. Um, Fernandez was quality in that game as well and again it was kind of looking around and going I wasn't going to pick Caicedo because I don't think Caicedo's kicked the ball since he went to Chelsea I wasn't going to pick Lavia um, but then I started looking at the Everton centre midfielders and I just thought yeah I think this fella's going to be a superstar you know I just think two or three years he's going to be absolutely phenomenal so he went in and it's looking like a very very good midfield straight away Seeming like he's happy at Chelsea, which I'm surprised. Like, I'm not surprised he's happy at Chelsea, but with him doing so bad, I thought that he wouldn't be massive. He'd probably regret the move or something like that. But he seems to be a player that says he loves playing for Chelsea. He seems really yeah. committed, doesn't he, for now? Sure, 400 grand a week and 10 year contract doesn't hurt. So yeah, I, it does help. I, no. think be a, I wonder what he likes playing so, for. Selling hotels to probably pay him his wages <laughs> yeah, as well. Exactly. Yeah. It's like right. a monopoly, isn't it? Selling it to each other. Um, so this again was a very very easy call. I knew I was going to play four four one one because Chelsea don't have any strikers. We barely have a striker. Um, I looked at all the goals between them. I think we're like less than ten goals if you added DCL, Beto, and Jackson. So wasn't really having that. Number ten is Conor Gallagher. Um, I love Ooh, Conor Gallagher. I love Conor yeah. Gallagher. Do you like him? I want, yeah, I've got I want him a little this. bit. I wanted us to sign Conor Gallagher when he was uh, the year after he came back. He was on loan at Crystal Palace. And there were rumours they were going to let him go on loan again. I really, really wanted him. I know this talk tells you are going to sell him because he's homegrown and academy and FFP and pure profit. But I just think he's... I, I just really rate him. And I'd give anything to have a player like that on our team. Um, He's just so creative. It's not bad from a set piece. He has a goal in him. And we have nothing like that in our team whatsoever. Um, I thought about Nkunku potentially, but again, they signed him last year. He got injured straight away, came back. He's definitely a player. He's definitely a player. But he hasn't impressed me that much. So Gallagher went in there, and that left me with one up front. And because of the rules of the game, the next player had to be an Everton player. I don't rate Nicholas Jackson. Yeah, it's got to be an Everton. It's well, it's got, it's got. You've left yourself where it's yeah. got to be an Everton player. Now, so you what could I have did put was, someone else so what I did was, I, I decided, but... I decided to go easy on him, and I said we'll put DCL up front in this team, and hopefully with some decent wingers, and hopefully with a decent number ten, he gets a little bit of service, and that's what I went with. Now, if I didn't have to pick so many Everton players, this team would look a little bit different. But based on the rules of the game, this is what I've gone with. And I don't think it's a bad team. I think 
good looks at Ari. It's it's amazing what you can do when you sign a few players, isn't it? This is because yeah. you've added what five Chelsea players, and this is what you get. I mean, you've yeah. took the best ones, haven't you? You've took some good well, ones here. This, I would have had Thiago Silva in there, but it's not a bad side, is it? No, because I think Tarkovsky is pretty good. I, I think Tarkovsky might enjoy it with Reese James at the side of yeah. him there. Probably less less worrying, isn't it, with him at the side of him than what yeah. probably what he would do with our other right backs. Miko, he's solid. Some would question whether Sterling and Miko is a good combination there. Like, is Sterling going to get back and help Miko out? But you and then Miko, Miko's not going to go too far forward, is he? So Sterling maybe doesn't have to no. get back as much. So. Yeah, uh, the Blues, I read your comment. I, I totally understand what, what you're saying, but I definitely wasn't going to pick an Everton winger. So, unfortunately, I had to go with a striker. Um, I wasn't picking in Kunku. I wasn't picking Jackson. So, it had to be DCL. I'm just getting the comments on the screen. Should be in a Kunku behind. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, the Blues. if you When we ask for yours in a minute, we might chuck one on the screen. I get Rob to read it out and we'll chuck one on the screen of what your lineups are in the comments, people. I like it. I do like it. I'm going to do mine in a minute. It's going to be interesting to see what mine is, isn't it? But, yeah, um, on the fly. It's, it's a good lineup. Thank you very much. I'm yeah. happy with that. I, 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 might finish... change the, I might change the formation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think we'd finish, Dan? We finished top four already with that team. Top six. <laughs> <laughs> Top ten. I honestly think that team. I honestly think I'm not. I'm not even joking. I think if you combined us with Chelsea, the team could compete for the Premier League. I really do think that. I think Chelsea have got some cracking players, but they're missing certain pieces to put the players together. If you know what I mean, they're just they've got a lot of good players, but they are missing a couple of players, like Everton players, that could turn them into a good team. Now a it's lot of Everton years, fans would probably say, "Oh, Everton players are crap," and that they wouldn't help Chelsea that much. But you, Chuck Brown, look at that now. It really does help them. Well, let's Calvert be honest. is better than Jackson for me. Calvert-Lewin is better than Jackson. Let's be honest. Pickford, Brantway and Onana get into the Chelsea team. They just do. So DCL obviously up some top. Point. He's happy now. Calvert-Lewin, <laughs> Emma's going to their DCL up top. He is really happy. He's up top. You know He's going to get loads of service. Emma, I'm going to remember that comment. I'm going to remember that comment when you pick your team. Uh, let's see who you've got up front. Now you ha- remember the rules now. We're going to look at your now. teams in a minute. Yeah. We'll be <laughs> looking. We'll be I don't want to see 10, 10 see healthy players. Team. I want you to do it properly, and I want to see what you come up with. Right, so let's let's do mine. Then. Let's do Go this. On. Dan let's is going to do is The Blues is probably going to rip me. By the way, when I, when I do do this, it's on the screenshot, so... I can't see some of the comments. Rob will keep interacting with I the will. comments when I do I it. Will. So here we go. Dan, Dan the man. Dan the man. Let's do this. This is my managing moment. Some people say, oh, you think you're your manager? You do. You think you know it all? Well, yes, I do. And this is going to be the moment. Right. So I'm going to do... Do I get the same rules as you? Yeah. Well, you made them. You made them. They're your rules. Yeah. Didn't know if I'd get away with it. Like... <laughs> Here we go. You can pick Man City players. I think this is this is quite an easy formation here. This is an easy. I'm going to leave your team on, and I'm just going to change it to make it nice yeah. and quick and a good view for yeah. the people. So I'm just going to change what I would change. So there's the formation. Um, I'm going to stick with what you've got in defence, but I'm going to put. Um, I'm, I think I'm going to change the right back. Interesting. I like I like the, I like Gusto. I really do like him. He's, he's the probably been the best thing that they've got. So I'm going to give him a go. Although some people will say I'm mad here leaving um, Reese James out. Do I do I put Reese James in? Ah, uh, your call. I mean, this Reece is where James. it gets hard, isn't it? Who's, some yeah. people will say now, like you're mad. Lee, not thinking James is better than uh, the, the well, let, let's the let's Gusto. have a quick poll in the comments while Dan is debating who thinks Reese James is better than Gusto. Well, let's see what people think. It's Go on, just, Dan, you made not, a choice. Uh, you yeah, a get, choice. It, get it in the comments now. Let us know in the comments who do you think is this? This is the man, isn't it? This is the Gusto. Yes, that's him. I like him. I think he's rapid, fast, and he's everything I could dream for in a right back. I'm going to give him a chance because I think Reese James, he's been a bit of a flop this season. So I'm putting Gusto in there just for the reason that you've been injured quite a lot. I know you can't help being injured, but Gusto's in for me. 
that defence just looks good, doesn't it? I, I can't. If we're going to have to put uh, six Everton players in, I can't change that. I think you've got to get three in your defence. That's the, the fact problem. That that, that's our strongest Everton part. Are probably, we've got the, yeah, we've got one of the best defences in the Premier League. I'm not saying they're best, but we're definitely up there. Yeah, we're looking to the last, up there, the last so six weeks. Problem. You know, we last six weeks, it's gone a little bit, but, you know, we, we've built our team around our defence. Um, no, that's gone off the boil a little bit, but it's the strongest part of the team is the defence. We have been testing it, though, haven't we? We have been, like, really testing it. Like, we're piling more and more pressure on our defence because we're having no uh, possession, are we? That's the problem. So I'm going to go for here. I'm going to do Onana, yeah? Yeah. This is a bit of a wild move because I don't think that this player has been that good, but I, I do think off. he's going to be good. Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. They're very I, I similar, aren't they? Put... Very similar. Yeah. Oh, man, can I say it off? Too... Well, do you, know, do you know the reason I've done this, Rob? Because I think, like, do you know when you go 4 2 3 1, it can yeah. be a 4 2 4 sometimes, can't it? So I think you've got to have two really good centre midfielders, like CDMs, there. And I think. Casado and Onana, they put some tackles in. They would, wouldn't they? That'd be, they'd be hard to beat. They would. They really would be. I mean, you've got the combination there of two really good centre backs in Brownthwaite and Tarky that are good at tackles, and then in front of them, two really good tacklers again with Casado and Onana. So I think that spy is absolutely rock solid, and I'm getting excited here. I actually want to see this. I want to be a manager now. <laughs> I want to be the Chelsea. I think you've got more chance of getting this team being the Chelsea manager than the Everton, as it looks that we're not going to sign many players. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm going to move straight to the number 10 position here. You know who I'm going to put here, don't you? I hope you're not going to put... Oh, I was thinking you were going to put Jack Harrison there for a minute. I said, Jesus, what is he doing? Yeah, Cole Palmer, absolutely. Oh, no. Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. This is where I'm going to run out of players now, isn't it? So what have you got there now? You've got one, two, three, four, five. You've got five Everton players. Got two Onanis. So you need... Yeah, you need to pick two Chelsea wingers, basically. Or one two Everton Two Chelsea winger. wingers. One or Everton one winger. Everton, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hazel, Dan is doing the pre-match tomorrow night, I believe, with... Uh, you've got yeah. a Chelsea fan coming on, Dan, have you? Yeah, it's... Um... Jamie is coming on because Paul's busy this weekend. He's got some uh, important stuff. And uh, Jamie is coming on with me, which will be a cracker as well. We A lot of the Toffee Bluecast members are coming on now. Um, Jamie will be coming on. And, yeah, it should be a cracker, to be fair. We've got Chelsea fan as well. So we've got a lot for you. We're just having a bit of fun tonight to build it up. And we're starting with this. It gives you an idea of both teams. And then tomorrow we'll do the pre-match talk with a Chelsea fan. What do you think of that then? That's a little bit of a sneaky move, isn't it? That- do you know what? It's the only one you could have made because, as I said, he's he hasn't played recently, and when he has at the start of the season, he was kind of hit or miss, but he's definitely got a bit of quality about him. There's no argument for putting Harrison and Mike Neal in this team. So, if you're going to pick one Everton winger, Dan Juma is the only one you can pick. So, I yeah, no issue with that. I think Dan Juma could be good. Yeah, he could be good with Palmer as well, if, if you get where I'm coming from. I think that could be a good combination. What is goals so there? I've got one wins. more. One, two, three. So you've got two more Chelsea four. players. You've one more Chelsea. Around, I think, I've think got one more Chelsea, haven't No, two more. You've picked six Everton players there. You've got Pickford, Tarky, Brantway, Miko, Onana and Danjuma. Yes. Here we go. you got them all in. Here we Ooh. go. But that means you're picking a Chelsea oh. striker. Yeah, I know. That's, that's made it a little bit tricky for me now. This is the thing with doing it on the... Uh, Spot, isn't it? It's got me thinking now. I think I'm going to... I've got to put Jackson there now. They, they've got crap strikers, by the way. No offence to the Chelsea now, fans and stuff Nkunku, like that. And Kunku is going to be good. He is going to be good. But you yeah, can't pick him on the, on the list. You can't pick him based on what he's done. Like, he's been injured for a year. He's come back. You know, it's going to take time. Now I feel really disappointed, though, because I actually... I feel like I wanted an Everton striker here. Beto, get take Dan Juma out, get Beto in there. <laughs> he's taking him out of look, he's debating. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm sorry, but I'm doing it. 
And I'm, and I'm putting Beto in there because he's going to get a lot of service from these guys. You, I think he's you, just going to you have to pick Beto because if I've heard anybody talk about Beto for the last six yeah, months, it's been you. So you have Do you know what, though? Last game, he did he did look a bit sluggish last game. Yeah, he did, didn't watching he? watching him did. in real life. He looked a bit slow, yeah? Yeah. So, I don't know. He, he, had, he gave me a little bit of a worry. He really did give me a little bit of a worry. Um, on the wings... Two Chelsea wingers. Here we go. We was we was we was linked to this player, Woodridge. I've got to spell his name right, Anna. It's M U D, is it? M U D. M U D. Yeah, there Here he is. Go. There, yeah, yeah. Didn't want to be picked, did he? Didn't want to be picked. No, um, yeah, I don't time. mind him. To be fair. Have you, have you seen that 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 Ukrainian partnership that we've got down that left hand side now? <laughs> Class that is. Mick, I didn't even oh. think about that, but that's going to be a good partnership. Miko and Mudrik down the yeah, left hand yeah. side. Well, what I about the other that. side? What are we thinking? You wouldn't think, would you, that you're struggling like to pick wingers, would you? Because I'm not a fan of Sterling. I really struggled here. Yeah. Now, I have to put to, Sterling. Well, I'm looking in the comments to see what people are saying. Jackson over DCL. I probably wouldn't. I, I, no, I, really I, I don't. Wouldn't. I don't rate Jackson. Jackson's in a better team. He's in a far better team. But he's not a better player. Just going to have a look to see on the. Um... I don't know. It's hard on the right wing, isn't it? That's what I'm stuck with at the minute. Now I've got the players here. I put them on the screen. Um... Is that I don't I don't rate that Maju, do you? This is uh sorry, so like the oh no, I, I saw Maju. him last week. He played the sweat last band week, all the time. He started uh, left mm. midfield last week. Who did they play? They drew two all but Burnley, they nearly got beat. I didn't think he was anything special whatsoever. Um the blues, you're right, he does have nine goals. But he got three of them in one game at the start of the season against uh, Tottenham, and Tottenham had nine men. So six goals since that, and a much better team is not exactly. Yeah. Um, it's not exactly. The Chelsea the team that is in. Yeah, that means he's got the six Chelsea goals. Team in is in, you'd months. expect better. I find him mad. But, but I don't think I don't think he is better Lukaku. than Dom. I think Dom is in a Lukaku really, really would be bad in this team. for me all, all day long. If if yeah, we could pick Lukaku, but he's on loan, so we can't. We've done a rule where we're not allowed to have loans, people. But if we if we could pick Lukaku, who's still on Chelsea's books, he'd be in there all day, and I'd be really excited to have Lukaku. Yeah, I watched Lukaku against England. They played England in a friendly there a couple of weeks ago. He's um, good, wasn't he? He put, he put a ball in Outside at the back the post foot. for your team and scored a header. That was a great ball. Outside of the left foot. I think it was Lewis Dunk who was the centre-half. He tore Dunk apart. He put Dunk on his backside as well at one stage with a shoulder. Yeah, I did see that. And that outside of the football. And so uh, he put outside of his football, straight wicked ball. To Diamond to header, Tillman. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Yeah, and, and he's done it. Then someone showed a, a repeat clip where we'd done that for Everton as well. So he, he did has, it for a Runa. Was, well. was it for the Coney goal? A Runa Coney header? Nearly sure it was. Nearly I think sure. It was, yeah. I'm going to have to play Sweatband. I'm going to have to go sweat ban, you know. I'm not, you know, it's frustrating because I'm not even a big fan of him. And I put Dan Juma above him, which is really crazy. But I will have to go sweat ban. I, I, I mean, I could have I could have gone a Chelsea centre-back, couldn't at the side of Brampway. Yeah. And that would have... That, you... that could change it. Yeah, do you know what? I'm going to do that, Rob. Thiago Silva in. I can do that, can't I? Yeah, and then put um, Dan Jim yeah. on the wing. Yeah, I think um, I think we've yeah, got to make that that move. Let's just do this. And you've got to got to make that move. I've got to get it right, Anna. That's the thing. If I'm going to win the Premier League, I think. Imagine Thiago Silva and Brantway. Oh my God, that would be like defense heaven. That would. He's it? 39, and he's still. Absolutely phenomenal. Like he's just so good. It's it's interesting because when we have a Chelsea fan on, which we will on the pre-match, the Chelsea fan probably will mention that they did have Harrison on the books and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure they Harrison had they had it was yeah, that Man City, City wasn't he, Harrison? Oh Man City it was, wasn't it? Yes, it wasn't yeah. Chelsea. There you go. Yeah. So that was a well done, Rob. 
you caught me out there. I thought it, I yeah. knew it was someone that Jack Harrison was a big team. Yeah, but there you go. I'll, I'll say that. I'm going to pull <laughs> Dan Juma. Dan, Dan Juma, Juma can play both, can't he? Yeah, well, Mad look, Ducky, we don't have Dan long Juma. left for him. He's definitely not signing on a permanent, and he's probably going to come back for the last six games. So let's enjoy him while we have him. Let's hope he can contribute. Could put Deli Ali in. Could put Deli Ali in. Um, but I'm not going to put Deli Ali in. That is my team, by the way, people. So it's Jordan Pickford in goals. Mikalenko left back. Good partnership with Madrid there. Brantwaite, Thiago Silva, Gusto, Onana, Casado. Dan Juma, Palmer, Palmer in that number 10. That's what I, that's what we need so bad, Rob. Yeah. That number really 10. Is. Oh. And, and yeah. just anybody on that. a good player in number 10. Anybody on the wing. I mean, that's, you know, I know you've got Dan Juma in there, but that's two teams now where we've really struggled to pick an Everton winger because we just don't have anybody. If we had a number 10 on a winger, it would just make a massive difference. Let's get the uh, comments on now and see... What people think of my team? Have I been ripped here or not? Lads, they don't no, have to I... be great to be better than our strikers. I get it. That seems to be the part people are upset with that both teams had an Everton striker. But I firmly believe that, you know, if the Everton strikers had even the slightest bit of service, that they would do better. Um, don't get me wrong. Beto has been wasteful. DCL at times has looked like he's not putting us all in, but it must be frustrating. You've got Dwight McNeil torn him back, and you've got Jack Harrison doing the same thing every week. And um, like, look at the Beto goal against West Ham, the header. Like, why don't we do that more? Why don't we just put the ball in the box more? Just see what happens. It just drives me absolutely insane. No, it does my head in as well. I mean, I, I was saying on the last game, I can't believe we didn't press more. So I've, I've had it from some people saying, you really think that we can press and stuff like that. But I would like to press more. I really well, I think, I think anybody can press, can't they? Isn't that the whole point of it? Pressing doesn't require a whole lot of skill. It's just basic effort, isn't it, pressing? You press as a team. You don't have one guy pressing and the other sitting back. But it's it's all it's all down to what the manager wants to do. And, you know, he's, he's quite a negative manager at times as well. And, it, you know, his philosophy is he'd rather not lose a game than go out to win it. And that's fine when you're... At a club like Burnley, maybe with no expectation, or when you're sitting comfortable mid table. But, you know, we've let a lot of games pass us by. Bournemouth, 1 0 up at West Ham, you know, 1 0 up at Brighton. A lot of games where we should have really went for the kill. Uh, even last week, we were 1 0 up at Burnley, or sorry, home to Burnley, and Burnley had a man sent down. And I still wasn't sure we were going to win that game. You've got to go for it, you know, you've got to be brave. Um, but, look. I suppose at this stage, it's just about staying up and seeing what happens in the summer. It's it's interesting because when Dyche first come in, he did press against that Arsenal against that Arsenal team. He pressed really high, and they tried to pass it out from the back, and it worked. It really did work. And some people say we can't do it, and I really like you've just said it's not hard to press. Just push your team up and just try and force a mistake. And yeah, we've seen it a couple thing. of times work this weekend. It has worked against a few teams and it the press has. I can't remember who, who played first today. It, it really it was New, work Newcastle and Tottenham, wasn't it? Yes, Newcastle did yeah. that tactic, didn't they press? That's what's put it in the air. And it, and it really did work because Tottenham just want to pass out. That's their style, the new manager's style. And and um, that Spurs would always they, they do exactly what Burnley do, and I know it's crazy comparing those two teams, but they do. It's the goalkeeper has the ball in the middle, and then you've got two players on the edge of the, each box, and he's going to play it to one of them no matter what. And then you have got your players just sitting on the box waiting to press that pass to see if you can stop it. And if you do stop that pass out, you've got the ball in their box and an opportunity to score. So it's so easy yeah. to score. But for some reason against Burnley, we sat back and let them pass it out quite a lot and then waited and that, for them to lose the ball the Blues, when they started passing it out. As the Blues just said, our numbers are actually quite good in pressing. So it's not and like you said there that people say we can't do it. Well, clearly we can do it. We've shown we can do it. Our numbers are quite good. So why in certain games does it look like we actively try not to do it? I don't think it's one or two people. It looks like certain games he tells them not to. And it's like, but it's one of the things that we're actually better at. It's, it's just, it just doesn't say it. 
I don't really know. Um, like when they go down to ten men, I can't have been the only person who was worried. Like we've seen it all before, haven't we? I can't have been the only one who was worried. I don't know why we didn't go for the kill. Um, and then he takes Dom off, and you know, Beto when he Did came the on. Sent off. Yeah, that I said sent down. That's yeah. That's probably just the Irish it means that I sent off. But um, yeah, just Beto when he came on. Actually, I I thought it actually um. It stopped the momentum of the team a little bit. Like, did you, you feel know, like you, know you were at the game when he came on? Did you feel like things kind of like Dom was actually putting a real shift in? I bet I looked absolutely exhausted after five minutes. I don't know, like I'm, I'm like you say, I've been one of the biggest Beto fans, but it's crazy because when you get to the game, I was that close to the players that you can, you can. It feels like you can tell what they're like as a person, what they've got in the tank. And I think, like, you look and you can see, like, on TV, you probably think he's got loads more about it than what he has. But then when you actually watch live, you realise that he's gliding a lot. He isn't as fast as I would like him to be. But I don't think he was having a good... I don't think he was having a good game either. That's the thing. I generally don't think he was having the best game. I want, I, I'm not going to... Just because I like a player doesn't mean I'm going to side up for him till. And keep siding up for him, even if I feel like I'm wrong. I'm not that sort of person. I think yeah, but like, when Beto went through, yeah, when he went through, Rob, he was like, he went through, and instead of trying to score, because he'd come across the play, he knew the player was going to collide with him. Yeah. So he was thinking more about the penalty than actually scoring. And I think, I just think, me personally as a player, I would try and score. And if, the, if they connect with you, and you don't score, you're going to get the penalty anyway. But at least try and do both. Do you know what I mean? A lot of players play for the penalty. They yeah, go all some, in on the penalty. Somebody should tell him that he plays for Everton and that Everton don't get penalties. So um, he's like he's wearing flippers. Yeah, he isn't as fast as I'd like. I thought he was faster. Yeah, but it's, it's this even though, isn't it? Because when I watched him score that Newcastle goal, he looked really fast. But there was a few. What well, there's been a couple of games like he does. He, like, you have to be honest. He's not the most graceful footballer in the world, is he? Let's be honest. He's a big unit. He's decent in the air. His first touch is not great, and he doesn't hold the ball up that well. But when the ball is played in front of him, he can move. Like he can, like he did it on his debut in the cup. You know, anybody remember his first goal? The ball was kind of knocked ahead of him. He was gone. He hit it around the keeper. The Newcastle goal. He has had a couple where he just puts the head down and runs and just barges into people. Um. But look, there's obviously a lot to work on there with him. Um, we'll see what happens in the future, I guess. Is it? Is it? Is it, I think he's like when do you know when I've I've played football? Um, I was quite a passion player. Do you know if I've got the ball, I can go on one of those runs where I've got that much passion. I don't stop from the back to the front, and you've got that passion to score and desire, and it can it can like you can use your power to get past a lot of people because you've got the drive, the drive to score. And I think Beto, when he's got the drive inside, he ends up faster and more powerful. But I think then when you watch him run around without the drive, when the ball's not there, he looks really like, like you say, slow and like he's got flip flops on. So it's I don't know, I don't know what to make of him. I'm not going to write him off this early because I think he's got a lot to give. He's he's, he's scored as how many goals has he scored now? Nah, Calvert Lewin's probably I think he's beating Calvert Lewin on goals, isn't he? Well, what what Beto got five, is he? Better got five and Dom has four. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. So he's beaten Calvert Lewin with probably less games. So can't rip him that much. He was knackered yeah, after just, 10 minutes. Yeah. I think the thing is with Beto is that I say this all the time and people think it's like an immediate insult, but he does remind me a lot of Umar Nias. Like, does anybody remember after Kuman got the boot, Nias was kind of brought in for another go and. He, he was just mad in the ass, wasn't he? You could just tell he couldn't play football, but he kept running and running and running, and he scored some of the scattiest goals you'll ever see in your life. You remember the one against Arsenal? I think he fell over the keeper and it hit his knee, and like it's only short of hitting him in the face before it rolls in. Um, but he, you know, he gives us all. He does run. He does work hard. I'm just not sure the quality's there. But having said that, I don't think we played to his strengths either. I think the West Ham goal was his strength. Um, we need to put the ball in the box, and I'm not on about ball to feet because I don't think he's good at holding the ball up. I'm on about balls in the air, in the air, in the air. Even if it's not, you know, scoring goals, it's knockdowns with his head, it's flick ons, it's bumping into the defender and knocking him over, just creating a little bit of carnage in the box. Um, 
So please, God. Yeah, I don't. Th- I think you're right. I don't think we play to a little one. What you're saying, you bang on. I don't think we play to his strengths better. I think better is better if you can get make you enable him to be a nuisance. Yeah, I think like you say, put balls in the box and centre backs. Sometimes a lot of goals from better. It's like that Nottingham Forest striker. I forgot his name. The one that helped keep him up last season. The big lad. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I, 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 Ad Adibayo or something was it? I can't remember. I know the fellow you're talking about. Yeah, Adibayo or something like that. Adibaya. But you probably all know her on about the big lad striker, a bit like Anachibi sort of build. And um, last season he scored so many goals, but they were just dopey goals. And do you know what I mean? Where they were just tappings, but because yeah, but he that, works it, hard, he, he reminds me of better. He does. He reminds it, me of better. And was it the same having him on? Bournemouth? Just makes you better. better. Better scored a goal against Bournemouth. Um, yeah. Was that when the keeper dropped it, was it? He dropped it basically on his head. And then wasn't there the game of the cup against Fulham when we were 1-0 down? Did the same thing happened, the ball in the box, and it kind of launched around and Beto stuck out the head on it. Like Jamie there. Yeah, there he is. Here's the man on tomorrow, Jamie. Jamie we're telling everybody. We're on Beto now. We've, we've both done our combined lineups. Uh, we'll crop them and we'll chuck them on the uh, Toffee Bluecast Twitter. It's interesting because it was both different. I thought we'd both be the same. Well, I do you know what from that lineup though, Rob? Um, we talk a bit about a better, which we'll go back to. But from that lineup, we we ain't got a whole bad lot of players. You know, I keep saying this. We've got a handful of good players. I don't think we're far away from being a really good team because, but well, we might lose all these players in the summer. And this is what's going to hurt me so bad as an Everton fan. You know, because it's took us so long to get rid of all the dross, like. Um, Delph. Well, we we know the types Toja. you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, you know who I'm on about, Delph, Toja and all that. It took us so long to clear out all the bad, Gabamin. It took us so long to get rid of them. Walker. Get them off the, yeah, Walker. Get them off the box. Him, right? Ghost. <laughs> Wilcott. But it's, it took us so long to get rid of all those players. Uh, now our squad's really thin, but we have got like a good route of players that you could build and become a good football club around. I think there's, there's a couple of issues with the fact that... Well, Dan June was definitely going back, and Jack Harrison's definitely going back. So the problem is, your loan players are not going to stay. You need at least two more bodies in. Do we have any money? Are we going to loan? Like, it is concerning. It is concerning. We clearly need wingers. We clearly need pace. Uh, we need some sort of creative midfield player. Like I, lo- I am probably James Garner's biggest fan. I love James Garner. The way you feel about Onana, I feel about James Garner. I love James Garner. But he's not the most creative midfielder in the world, is he? Like, we need somebody in there. No. Somebody in that number 10 role. Um, but these lads cost money. And if yeah, we're already the thing, losing do, 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 what Do you know have, what I think to myself, though, Rob? Do you know what I think to myself? I think this is the way I think at the minute. And it's pretty sad that our standards have become this low. I think as long as we can... I already know the situation that we're going to have to sell players next season. That our budget is often going to be nothing. And which is sad that our budget's going to be nothing in the transfer window. But I do think to myself now, if you stay in the Premier League, it's appealing just being in the Premier League. Now, the Premier League is shit, so I don't want to say that because what they've done to us is disgusting. But a lot of football players do want to play in the Premier League. Don't you see, so I, a, it, I think you can always get on. players, Rob. Yeah, but see, the problem is, Dan, to buy players, you need to, the club needs to be sold. Like, if the club is in this weird state of limbo where it is at the moment, who's buying these players? Who's putting the money in the pocket? Like, is Kevin Taylor going to be there? Is Mashiri going to sanction signings if he knows the club's getting sold? When these people do sell the club, looking at 777 or MSP or whoever it may be, looking at what they've done in the past, if they sell Brantway and they sell Onana, are they going to reinvest that money? It's all well and good saying, oh, we have 100 million. Are we going to have 100 million to spend? Or do we just have 100 million? Like, we need clear clarity. We need a manager. We don't even know if the manager's going to be there. He might keep us up this right. year. 777 might take over. And they might sack him. Because they've done it before. 777 might not even get approved. Like, we we have get... no idea. Rob, it's not as easy. <laughs> Rob, oh, Rob's, Rob knew what it was like. Rob knew what it was I to- like. I told, you all, we're I told you all six months ago. And here we go. But anyway, he did so. say it would take a long time and it would take a long time for them to get through. But I, I do understand where you're coming from. We just want to. This is the problem. Like, we've 
got to stay up this season. But after that, you know, you've got a lot of stress after that. Like, there's so many Everton stresses at the minute. You've got the massive stress of staying up. Finally, the stress of what we're going to get as a deduction is over. We've got the stress now to stay up. But I always think you've got to break things down. Because, if you, you know, like, if you put all your stresses in your head, you can't think straight and you just can't deal with everything. So I think you've got to break it down to, to what you can deal with and what you can't. And I think that's what we've got to do now is we've got to take what we can ah, affect. And what we can't. And the only thing that we can affect now is staying in the Premier League. And I think what's all we've got to do is stay in the Premier League because I can tell you 110%. Oh, my God. My kid's freaking gerbil come out of the thing then. I nearly had a heart attack. I thought it was a rat in the house. Oh can my you play days. right back? Just went pale. I don't know how that's got out of the gerbil cage. Whew. Actually, well, it just ran under the cage. sofa. And I did say, I literally, I said to my daughter, you can't have a gerbil. Like, oh my God. Oh God, I and forgot about Mason Harger. He'll be, getting, he'll be coming him. back. No, not, Jesus. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Jibble, so it just ran underneath. Oh, yeah, we'll be running around the house for that now. Whew. No, but what where, what I was saying is I think that we need to... I did just see ghost I told you. It just ran. I seen it. I looked at the sofa, and it just ran under the sofa, and I thought, oh, my God, there's a rat in the house. And I don't like rats. But, yeah, it's a gerbil. It doesn't look like a rat. So I did let the kids get it as a pet. But it's it's out of the cage now. So we've got to get that somehow. It wants to get on the channel. I'll probably run across my shoulder. Then I get scared. But, uh, yeah, what I, what I was saying is I think we need to stay in the Premier League because we know for a fact, and Rob, you'll agree with this, is that if we're in massive trouble now, if we got relegated, we're in a lot more trouble. A lot, lot more to do. All the money we've loaned and stuff. If we, we're going to struggle to survive with the benefits financially from being in the Premier League. So if you take that away, we'll be in a lot more trouble. So I still, I still think we could be in a bit of trouble. But I definitely think we need to bring the Premier League to help whatever trouble we're in. Do you get where I'm coming from on that? Well, look, I mean, you know, I'd rather be in trouble as a Premier League club than in trouble as a Championship club. Um, Am I optimistic that the future is incredibly bright as an Everton fan? Not really. Do I think the people buying us are going to run us any better? Not particularly. Do I think we'll have any money to buy players? No. We sell our two best players. On, on that though, let me, let me just pick something sure out of your head will. there. because I'm, I'm going to jump on your points here. I'm not going to over talk you, but I'm going to jump on your points because what you're saying, I always want to just like interact and try and get what I think and you think together here. Do you think next season this is we like could we go back to the David Moyes thing where how many loans do you get? I think you get like three English loans and yeah, abroad loans. loans how many loans are... I think you can get three domestic loans and then you can take two um two far. I think you can have five loan players in your squad at any one time. Um so we've yeah, just yeah. added five players. We've just added five players to our team. And I mean uh, We've just added five players to the team, and this is what you get when you have five players. Does that come back up on the screen? No. Is that no? It hasn't. But that's we we added five players, and it looked a lot more healthy when we added five players. So, do you like like I say? Do you not you, think that five good that. loans could help us next season? Yeah, but I mean, if you'd have asked me. Eight or nine months ago, did I think the loans we made this year were good? I thought Jack Harrison was a good signing. I thought Dan Juma was a good signing. Like it's yeah, not like I mean, we loaned them and we said, "Geez, what? What are you like?" They're good loan players, but they haven't done the business. So it's like a perfect storm. You need to get the players, and then the players have to perform. So, and then you need a manager who plays to their strengths as well. Um, like we can all tell that. Dan Juma wasn't a Sean Dice signing. Jack Harrison was a Sean Dice signing. Dan Juma wasn't. Dan Juma no. was a Kevin Telwell signing. And probably because Kevin Telwell had him in the building a year ago, ready to sign, and had a form in his hand with all the information on it. And it was an easy deal to do. Like, once Dan Juma fucked us off the first time, we should have never gone back from him. That should have been the end of it. We should have been out there looking again. What that tells me is that we did nothing for six months in terms of scouting. We just kept the same players in our list that were there the year before. I don't even... I might get grilled for this, but I don't even think it's like Dan Juma not being asked at Everton. 
I don't even think it's his attitude. I just generally think that Dan, Dan Juma isn't a Sean Dyche player. Sean yeah, Dyche's tactics why just sign don't him? suit Dan Juma. That's what I'm saying, but why sign him? We paid we paid three million quid to sign Dan Juma. If he's if you know when you have him in the building that he's not the type of player you want and you're not going to use him, why sign him? Are you telling me we couldn't have got somebody else who could have come in and contributed and played the way Dyche wanted to? Of course we could have. No, like, yeah, um, I get what you're saying. Our, our man, I, 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 believe, I believe that it was already done, Rob. I think that I do too. It wasn't I, I, I think, it, I think he had the file was already done, all the research. Yeah, yeah, he had the file ready. You're right. He was ready I think to the Dan Juma file was already the there. And he was easy to get him in the door this year. And that's why we signed him. Uh, but that's not the way, you know. <laughs> That's not the way it should be done. <laughs> James on it tonight. Gonna be uh, James, but gonna be such a strong position. So I don't know, Nana, if it's well mate. You're dead right. You're dead right. right. Uh, the Blues then is saying, listen, let's not pretend he hasn't given chances and stunk the place out there. No, I, I think he has been given chances. And I don't think he's he's been played. I don't think he's played that well. I remember a couple of times where he could have put better when he was ball greedy. It's been the same with everyone this season. It really has been a frustrating season because when you, if you would have said to me at the start that we got Dan Juma, I was like, wow, Dan Juma, uh, Europa League player, Villarreal. And then I was like, um, he's going to be good. He's, I've heard he's fast. I heard he scores goals. I was excited about him. I thought he's like a Richardson sort of player. No way is he. Um, Harrison, I thought, when I always watched Harrison for Leeds, I thought he was the main player for yeah, Leeds. Yeah, I, I, I wanted he Harrison. Was, Power drive, yeah, scores goals. I, and I did want them. As yeah, it, I, look, I'm not going to yeah. say I didn't. I was happy with Harrison. So that's what I'm saying to you. Like, you can use the low market, but you, you know, the lads have to perform as well. We got two good players, as far as I'm concerned, on loan, but neither of them have really, you know, well, Harrison had a little spell there. He did have a spell, but, um, he, you know, Leeds are probably going to get promoted this year. I know they were beaten today, but they're probably going to go up this year. And, you know, he'll be going back to Leeds. And that's just the way it is. So we'll have to move on. And we'll have to get somebody else in. There's going to be, there's going to be, and I, and I know like, oh, would you go for this? Would you go for that? Even with a low budget, this is why I say we've got to stay in the Premier League. <coughs> Positive, Danny. Even with a low budget, there's going to be some cracking players about, you know. I mean, whoever gets relegated, there is still some good players. I mean, you look at, <coughs> Ross Barkley. People say, oh, are you crazy here? You look at Ross Barkley. I think he's a cracking player. I'll take him all day long, the way he's playing. I didn't want him at the start, but I would have him. Scott, um, Scott again, you look at like... that Hammer. That, do you know Hammer for uh, Sheffield United? I like Hammer. Do you, do, you, do you rate him? Number 10. I think he'd go um, well for us. Uh, I'd be honest with you. I'm not sure I rate a whole lot of Sheffield United players. <laughs> Um, no, no, but he's just one that I like before he went to Sheffield United. There's another one that's just scored for Blackburn today uh, that's playing on uh, the games with Garner and uh, still Ryan. What's his name? Uh, the attacking player. They did win today, Blackburn, didn't they? Um, they did win today, Blackburn, didn't they? I was looking at the result earlier. Really? The one that scored for Blackburn today. Do you know who I'd have from Sheffield United? Uh, just gonna look um, who he is now. He has the been lad. linked to us. Flash he, scored, he scored the winner against Leeds. It was your man. I can't pronounce his name. Smosdich, is it? Smosdich? Yeah, that's the one, isn't it? He scored, he scored the winner today for Blackburn against Leeds. Um, yeah, that's the one. Uh, we've been linked to him as well. He's a good little player. Championship works hard. A bit like um, Naismith sort of player. I how really much, like how much this. <laughs> how much do you think we could get Hammer for, Dan? They bought him for 15-20. I don't know, but I think like if you buy a player for 15 20 and you go down, they might loan him to us. We've seen that a couple of, of times, haven't we? Where Harrison Sheff- got loaned to Sheffield down. United will have known that they were potentially going down. I'd be shocked if there's not some sort of relegation clause in that contract that means if they go down, they don't pay the full 15 20 million. That's probably dependent on them being in the Premier League. So they may pay eight for him, they could sell him 15 million. Um, they might make a little profit or they might just break even. They might just need them off the books and they might just sell them for what they paid for them kind of thing. Uh, but I really like your man, Barrett and Diaz. Um, I wanted him when he left Blackburn. He's gone to Sheffield United and they had a little run there. He scored a couple of goals. From, um, I think he's only on loan at Sheffield United too. So if he's available, I'd, I'd love to get him in. Yeah, there is, there's more options than what you think. It's going to be interesting. 
I agree with you. I don't think a lot of the money that we get if we do sell players will go on players back. But it is going to be like really interesting. Right, before we end the show, I am going to do, you, I'm going to give the blues, the blues a go here. Rob, what I want you to do is I want you to read out what the blues says. So the blues, I'm going to put you on the spot here. I've got Jamie coming on tomorrow. Otherwise, I will pick Jamie, but Jamie's going to be on the pre-match with me tomorrow. Uh, the Blues, I'm going to put you on the spot. I want your combined lineup. So, Rob, tell me what he puts, and let's do the combined lineup. Now, remember the rules, the, the Blues. blues. He, he's like Stick a professional. He always, he always corrects me, doesn't he? So, it's easy when you're sitting let's in the armchair, Dan. You've got to put them under pressure. See who they pick. Yeah, let's let's do it. So, first of all, the Blues, we want your, your formation. Don't run away now because I'll give you the opportunity of a lifetime. I'll give you a chance <laughs> to combine these two teams and prove that you know you still for the Blues. So, starting with the goalkeeper, the what formation has he gone? Has he put it in there? Yeah, he said he's gone. One ten zero. I mean, no, I'm only messing. He hasn't said that yet. <laughs> no, we are. We want your formation first. So give me your formation. Uh, three four three. Three four three. Here we go. Three four three. He's in now. He's locked in. Put him on the spot. We like to we interrupt. Can tell that, uh... that so we'll end the show on this. Here we go. Three four three. Yeah, he's we. He's... He loves this formation. He does. He wants Everton to play it. Right. Goalkeeper. Who's he going for? It's got to be the easiest pick out a lot of goalkeeper, doesn't it? But let's see. He might throw a spanner on the work for. here. He might. Okay, Pickford. Pickford. <laughs> Just to get him in. Don't even ask about Pickford. Here we go. There he is. England's number one. Everyone just goes Pickford. <laughs> it's an easy one to put in when you're going to have more Right. The back three of Brantwaite, Tarkowski and Mikalenko. So it's got to be. Um, he, I think he says put Tarkovsky in the middle. Yeah, he'd have from yeah, listening to his other stuff. He's got a left foot at centre half and a left back in the back three as well. So you never know. But he he's done this before, and he said he's done it when uh, brantford has been playing for Everton, and he's he, he said he can't put Tarkovsky in. Uh, he's actually said that um, Brantford's that good. He's really good with both feet. So I get I'll let him off on this. We'll end the show on this one of the Blues. We would have put others on as well. Uh, put yours in the comments, people, as well, if you haven't already. Put yours in the comments, because we do like to have a look after the show. And we'll put it on the screen now, if you put it in. We want your combined lineup. So what's he gone for here? He's gone for Reese James on the right-hand side. I like this now. I do like this. I think Reese James is a phenomenal player, so good to see yeah, him. In. He's gone same as you there, kind of. He's what's gone, he gone with for Enzo Fernandez. Next to him, with Onana next to him. I think, yeah, he's I had Enzo too, Onana, James. So he's going with three. We're actually quite similar so far. I think I had all those yeah, players on my that. team. I, I did have all those players on my The formation is different. Um, he loves his formation, though, to be fair. Now, the next one I can't he's agree got with. He's got left wing. He's gone with... Dwight McNeil, aka Shite McNeil. He's got McNeil on the left. Yeah. Yeah. Up and down. Potentially, potentially because him. potentially because he had to put another Everton player in. So I will give him a break on that one. Now up front he's gone very, very, very attacking. Carl Palmer, Nicholas Jackson, and then Kunku. So Jackson uh, Palmer's going to be on the left, and he had to yeah, Palmer Jackson and Kunku. Put him there. So fair play. I mean, it's it's a good attacking team, absolutely. I mean, nobody can say otherwise. Um, he liked Jackson as well earlier on, didn't he? He did. The say strikers Jackson, might so get a little bit annoyed cover. with um, McNeil refusing to put the ball in the box, but at least they've got Reese James on the other side. <laughs> I also keep thinking of the Nakunku that we. The, the, does he want this Nakunku? No, that's that's the lad we had, isn't it? Neil's on Nakunku. Yeah, <laughs> that's the Nakunku that we sold. <laughs> oh, I know which Nakunku he means, but that is his team. It's interesting. It's interesting that he's, he he must be really happy with Everton's um, defence and left hand side because he's changed nothing there. We've got the three same defenders. 
Onana's next to McNeil. See, that's probably something we could do as an Everton team anyway. So then we could do that. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the formation. It's very, very attacking. I'll give him that. I mean, you you wouldn't want Sean Dice to be the manager in this team, would you? Because, um, <laughs> let's be honest, he'd be changing that to a 4 4 4 1 or 4. Uh, he'd have 5 at the back or 6 at the back or 8 at the back. But, um, yeah, fairly attacking lineup. They'd probably be able to do it better than us. He did say he wanted Palmer on the right. I knew he'd correct me in some sort of way. Of course, he would the Blues, yeah, well, but he Pat did say Palmer he would Palmer float around. They can switch. He, they? Yeah. yeah, they can switch. Um, but no, that was the no Blues. Gallagher. We'll no probably... Gallagher. No. Yeah. That's You didn't pick Gallagher either, Dan. Do you know what? I really, really wanted Gallagher, Rob. I really wanted him so bad. And Lampard, under Lampard, I was willing to pay forty million for him, which is crazy because that was the talks at the time. I wanted him that bad because he was really good for Crystal Palace. But when I watch him at Chelsea, he just doesn't excite me that much. Always picks up yellow cards, nothing major. But Chelsea, Chelsea probably might say tomorrow on the pre-match that they really like him. He's one of the best players. They'll probably be on your side, no doubt, Rob. But well, he I starts every week. He starts good. every week in a team that's bought 700 players. Um, he's made the England squad. Uh, I watched him against, I think he scored against Man United last week, didn't he? Um, anytime I watch him, he plays well. Uh, I just like him. I loved him. I thought he was brilliant that year. He was at Crystal Palace. Did he score an absolute cracker against those, didn't he? Palace beat us at Goodison. He scored an absolute yeah. belter off the bar, didn't he? So, yeah, he's got a bit about him, and I would kill for a midfielder like that in our team. Um, but it's going to be it's going to be like really interesting to play this team because they, they, I always find Chelsea weird because they've been so bad. I mean, we're coming to an end now, people. We will be finishing the show, but I always find it mad because Chelsea always say, oh, they've got this player, they've got that player, and they've got so many good players, but they just don't perform that well. And like it's like now, a lot of Everton fans, have, when I did the survey, a lot of Everton, I think it was 26% said we'll draw uh, no, 48% said we'll draw, 26% said we'll win. A lot of Everton fans quite confident against this Chelsea because they feel like this Chelsea's not been playing well. But then it's deceiving because I look at the team and I think, no, they are actually good. Do you get where I'm coming from? You're in two minds, ain't you? You don't know whether... You know that they're good, but they play yeah, shit. I mean, so I don't know how to take this team. It's one of those. Where are they going to nick a 1-0 or we're going to get absolutely tumped 4 or 5 and one um, they've got quality. They score goals. Cole Palmer, <laughs> phenomenal. Um, completely agree with that, Jamie. Yeah, I mean we we don't score goals, and lately we're conceding goals. So you know they could turn up and have an off day, or they could turn up and have an easy day, and we need to play our absolute best to beat them. And if we don't play our best, we'll get beat, and that's how it'll be. But it's a big game. We've yeah, got a couple are, of games yeah. in the hand. I think we're two games in hand on Luton, Forest, um, and Burnley. None of here won today. So even if we got a point, it'd be a massive point. It really would. The results have gone. I mean, you you, you put in the group today, Rob. Uh, the results have gone our way today massively. A lot of teams draw and stuff that are around us. And um, we didn't want Forest to win, which is crazy, but... I've got no Forest fans, by the way, no disrespect, but they probably don't want us to win either. Like, we want our own football club to stay That's up. It. Unfortunately, we're in that many, battle. So. You have to keep as many yeah. in the mix. Brentford won today, so Brentford are probably safe. Push away uh, a big, bit, big, yeah. game, big game for Crystal Palace tomorrow. Crystal Palace are not, you know, they're not out of yet either. So, um, no, they can, we, they can come back into it. Yeah. It's going to be like. It's going to be really interesting on what happens at the bottom of the table. I don't know. We we all know what points we're dealing with now, roughly, unless the what unless something happens with the appeals. But we roughly know what we're dealing with. Chelsea, would you, you could call it a free hit, but you really do want something from it because if you get something from it, it's massive, isn't it? Because I, I when you look at the games, Rob, I think when you look at what games we should get something from and what games you think we might not. You'd have Chelsea in the might not, wouldn't you? So I think yeah, it's I mean, a free hit, mind off. I, th- I think the problem is that our official game in hand is the derby, the Merseyside derby. Um, to me, that's a free hit because I don't see us getting anything there. We We're winning do. that. We're winning that. We're so winning the that. Chelsea game, I don't see that as <laughs> much of a free hit. I think we're more than capable of getting something to Chelsea. Um, 
So, yeah, I mean, if, look, I'd, I'd snap your hand off for a point now. Of course I would, but stranger things have happened. We could go there and win. Um, who knows? But one thing's for sure, we're not going to win against Liverpool. <laughs> no, we it's are winner. winning that. I knew you could hear me. You was ignoring me. We are winning against Liverpool. Oh, I watched them against the uh, thingy. We know the score. Atalanta. We seen, we've seen the smash them up, yeah. yeah. And we've seen them get smashed up. And I'm telling you, I knew they've got that in them. And we are winning that derby. So if we could, if we could somehow beat Chelsea and win the derby, oh, it's then you wake something. up, then the alarm clock goes off. It makes us those, it makes us those easy games a lot easier. Me and Rob are going to have a side bet on this game. <laughs> we are definitely the derby is going to be harder. Understand? I get it, but I'm just saying we're going to be better. We're, we're good against the harder teams. Last season when we stayed up. When Pickford made those wonder saves against Chelsea, we was actually a lot better against the better teams. I think we did well against Man City. We did well against Chelsea. We seen uh, we did well against Spurs. I know Spurs was crap today, but we do do better against the bigger teams because we, I think that we just let them mess up and then we go for it. I don't know. It's going to be an interesting one. Right, people. Thanks for participating. The Blues. Thanks for your uh, team. We did drop it on the screen. Uh, it was a good one. Rob's done his. I've done mine. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Going to drop the banner now, people. We It will be Jamie and me tomorrow night with a Chelsea fan at nine o'clock to get us ready for the game. Been good tonight. It's a new thing that we might start doing. Let us know what you thought of it. It just gets you ready for the game. And then tomorrow we get ready even more. So up the top is. And I'm sure you'll be in the comments tomorrow, Rob, telling us what I you will. Want, I'll, I'll be watching tomorrow, tomorrow boys. Tomorrow. I will. So I'm love Jamie. I'm off here tonight. Nice one, lads. Good night, folks. Yeah, that's what we want. Good feedback. And we will keep coming live for you to have a little get-together. Let's drop, find the banner here. Up the top is everyone. It's weird, isn't it, like Monday, Rob? Monday is... it's. I don't like waiting. I'd rather go first. Do you know what? As I said today, Sheffield United beaten. Bournemouth drew. Oh, sorry. Burnley drew. Luton lost. Not no farthest drew. I'm looking forward yeah, to just a stress-free day tomorrow and bring it on Monday you know as well. What you're see with. What happens. Exactly. Look, it's in our hands. It's always been in our hands. Let's see what happens. Exactly. Up the top is everyone. Have a boss night. And we'll be back again with Toff and really? Lucas. Ready for the game with a Chelsea fan on. Uh, thank you, Rob, for coming on. It's been a cracker having you on. An interesting show. Have a boss one, everyone. Up the Take top care. Is-